Welcome guys, in this video it's all about, as you can see, different lenses that I've been using with the Blackmagic Packet Cinema 4K camera. So when it comes to lenses for this camera, uh, there are native lenses. Uh, there's there's actually quite a bit of you know lenses to choose from different companies. Now, before I get into the specifics of each of these lenses, why would you want to shoot with uh, Micro Four Third lenses when you can use a speed booster, let's say adapter, like I've been showing, and using Cinema Glass? Well, because uh, by the time you put a speed booster and then especially you know full frame cinema glass, it, suddenly the small camera becomes very big. Uh, by using my native Micro Four Thirds lenses, as you can see, they they're pretty pretty small, way smaller than competition. I mean, some of these, some of them, like this one here, is uh, is tiny. Uh, but even like this really long zoom, this one goes out all the way up to three hundred millimeters. Uh, is still fairly small compared to a 300 mil for a full frame camera. So anyway, so what I have up here are kind of from all the way from the the longest, or basically the biggest zoom, down to the widest uh, lens up here. So the first one is the Olympus 75 to 300. It's a zoom lens. It's nothing special, I would say, when it comes to the quality. It's not bad. Uh, as you guys can see, kind of from my my nature shots that I've been kind of using this mainly for, it's it's a lens that works well. It's sharp and all that stuff, especially if you close it down by one f stop. But that's something where you gotta kind of be aware of the fact that this is a lens that you're probably gonna be using outside most of the time, and also you're gonna be using it on sticks. Why? Because, well, because it's a f 4.8. That's the widest aperture that you're gonna get with this. And that's only if you're on, uh, zoomed out at 75 millimeters. The second you zoom in to 300 millimeters, you're at f 6.7. Um, so it's not the fastest lens. Also, it's not st stabilized. So, uh, you know, and when you zoom in all the way at 300 with this, then on a camera like this, you're pretty much getting a kind of equivalent of like a 600 millimeter zoom uh, on a full frame camera. So. It's a crazy nice zoom, like again, like you can see, you can get some nice close-ups and all these nature shots, but um, at that kind of a zoom, tiniest shake, and I mean like little, like this little microscopic shake uh, is very, very noticeable on this camera. So you definitely, uh, with this lens, I mean, so when you're using this lens, you gotta be on sticks, pretty much. So sticks or some kind of other, you know, really good st stabilization. Because otherwise you're going to see every little shake. So that's why I would say it's a great zoom lens if, let's say you're going to be doing, I don't know, maybe, uh, I wouldn't even say sporting events because then you have to move the, you know, pan the camera a lot and all that stuff. But my, kind of more nature shots and that kind of stuff. Um, and, and it allows you to zoom in, uh, you know, a lot. So that's another great thing. But if you want to be shooting this with low light or, or where you're going to have to kind of handhold the camera sometimes, uh, then it's really not a necessity. So I'll kind of put that aside for now. Uh, another lens that I have up here is a great lens that I've been using for years and years with GH5, GH4, and all other basically Micro Four Thirds cameras. It's the Lumix Vario G lens. This is the first generation. There's a second generation that has slight improvements, not really in quality, but uh, there's some stabilization and, and things like that, compatibility with some of the cameras. But anyways, this one, if you can find yourself used you know version like i did of the first generation of this lumix vario g lens then get it and there's actually two of them i got this one's the longer range this is it 35 to 100 millimeters it's a constant f 2.8 which is another great thing it's, it's great if you want to use it in low light all that stuff plus it has image stabilization so uh that means that again this lens you can actually use it uh, even when you're zoomed in all the way at 100 which this will be like this is kind of equivalent of like a 70 to 200 millimeter on a full frame camera. So if you zoomed in all the way at 100 millimeters, uh, you're still going to be able to handhold this and get decent shots if you have the the you know iOS which is here enabled. So great lens, highly recommended. Um, so I'm going to put this lens maybe up here. And then here's the other Lumix Vario G lens. This is a 12 to 35, so nice wide uh, lens. And then it zooms into like um almost like a you know f uh, kind of a mid-range lens oh, and again it's f 2.8 it's got image stabilization sharp beautiful lens and again i would say these are like the two must-have lenses and and 
The same thing when, I, when it came to, for example, GH5 or GH4 cameras. These were the two lenses that I always recommended. The same thing is with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4D camera. I think these two Lumix Vario lenses, you gotta get, you gotta start with those two. Uh, they're pretty fast, like I said, f2.8. They're stabilized. They're just well-built lenses, and uh, they've never failed me really. And all kinds of weather and, and things like that. Um, another lens that I highly recommend is uh, this one. It's the 25 millimeter lens. Uh, I have it up here. As you can see, it's not too big, uh, and it's also the Lumix G lens, and it's um, it's not the the highest quality. And when I say, mean mean by that is it's it's made from plastic, uh, you know, so it's not like as well built as that you could say, and it doesn't have weather sealing. But still, this is such a cheap lens that uh, I, I think you have to get it. And 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 also the reason why is because this is probably like eighty percent of my work. If 25 millimeter or be equivalent to like a 50 millimeter on a full frame camera uh and it's great it's small very light lens because it's you know made out of plastic and it's very fast uh f1.8 so because of that um it's like a really great portrait lens you can get nice kind of shallow depth of field and all that stuff it is just yeah i mean there, there's really nothing you know nothing bad that i can say about this lens uh uh, it just it just works basically so if, if you whether you start with just this lens or with these two lenses then you get that one i think you're pretty much going to be set for majority of shooting there's, there's not going to be many uh, cases where you're going to require other lenses and that's why i would say these three here these are the the must-haves uh, and the reason is because with this one you can get a nice wide angle basically if you zoom out all the way to 12 then you can go to a mid-range lens with this one. You can zoom in all the way to 100 millimeters, which is, again, kind of like a 200 millimeter equivalent. Uh, and they're fairly fast to f2.8. But this one, if you want that really shallow depth of field, you throw this little sucker under and, you know, open it wide. And it's still sharp, but it has nice and shallow depth of field. Uh, it's going to give you that kind of creamy out-of-focus background. So very nice lens in that sense. Here's another one I tried that's basically the same kind of thing they try to do um it's a japanese made lens this is the voigtlander 25 millimeter so again the same focal length as this but i don't know if you can see up here drastically bigger so that's uh, that's one thing and it's also fully manual meaning if you do want to you know use some like the out of focus functions in the camera then you won't be able to use it with this with this lens these lenses also are, are all have af so that's another good good thing about uh basically when you're using it with this camera so yeah so it's full manual it's it's solidly built but then again it's so heavy that it's kind of like almost yeah, sometimes i just don't want to even throw it on the camera and then the reason why i got this is because it's crazy fast it opens all the way at to zero f 0 0.95 so very fast lens but i'll tell you guys it's kind of in my tests it's pretty much useless at f you know 0 0.95 it's so soft so blurry that uh it's just yeah it's kind of the way it kind of it creates almost this kind of ghost like effects on the on the sharp edges and uh, i'm not a biggest fan of this so i used it uh but i'll probably be getting rid of it so uh would not really recommend this one so i'll put it aside up here now here's another lens that's it's a great lens. Uh, actually, this is a Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, and I use basically the same lens uh, as this, but on my uh, Sony cameras uh, because it is a really good, you know, in, in the E mount version, it's also a really good lens. Um, it's got AF, and um, yeah, I mean, it's overall, it's it's a good lens. I would just say if, if you're gonna end up getting, especially this one. There's not that much of a reason to get this because this one, like I said, you you can go even wider f you know I mean in twelve millimeters, and you can also go at sixty millimeters like this one, uh, but then also you can go tighter. It's got image stabilization. It's got out of focus like this one, and it's also fairly fast. You know, not as fast as this one, but it's still plenty of fast, especially on wide angle kind of range like sixty millimeter. You're not gonna see that much of a difference in the, in the depth of field. Uh, between you know, f1.4 or uh, f2.8 uh, 
So that's why I would say if this lens didn't exist, then yeah, you can get this. But you'll notice it's still a big lens. It's a big and heavy lens. So for like, you know, Sony cameras, like APS-C size sensors and things like that. Yeah, that, that's you probably don't mind it because those lenses in general are going to be bigger. But for a small little camera like this pocket cinema camera, um, it's, it's kind of hard to recommend it simply because of that. So it's nothing wrong with the lens. But I just think, it's why buy just one focal length like this? It's kind of big, heavy. It's going to take up all the space in your camera bag when you can get something that's almost as fast, a little bit sharper, way smaller, lighter, and it has more focal length options, uh, like this Lumix Vario G uh, 12 to 35. So this one, it's not that I'm saying it's a bad lens, but I just, yeah, it's not something that I find myself using a lot. Now, this one is the smallest of all the lenses, and it's the widest. Uh, and I've already tested out a few of these from Laowa. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, this is crazy wide. This is 7.5, if you can believe it. Now, it's minimal distortion. I mean, there's obviously going to be some distortion at that kind of focal length. Uh, and it's also f2.0, so it's nice and wide. Great lens, but it's so wide that, like I said, it's, uh, you know, do you need to go often that wide? I personally don't. But if you're shooting something like music videos or things like that, then yes, get yourself this lens. It's not that expensive and it, you know, it's very small. You'll, you'll fit in your camera bag. So this is like a nice thing to have with you if, if you really need to do, I don't know, you're doing landscapes or, or, you know, architectural shots or, or music videos or something else stylized where you need that crazy wide angle lens, uh, then this will be good. Now it's not going to look like a 7.5 millimeter on a full frame camera would be crazy fisheye. There's just no way. To get around it and this again you got to kind of you know pretty much do you know mu multiply it by two so and basically it's a 15 millimeter equivalent to a full frame camera so it's it's kind of nice to have that range but at the same time i mean if you have already a wide angle lens let's say that's like a cinema lens like i have like those rocking on 12 millimeters and then you have a speed booster then then you don't really need this because you can get even wider with a speed booster and a cinema lens so Again, it's, you know, if you're not going to be using adapters, just going to be going with native lenses for this, then I would recommend this for the wide angle shots. But if you don't really need wide angle shots or you don't shoot them that much and you want to have the most common range, 12 to 100 millimeters, then these three lenses here are going to have you covered. Hopefully this answers your questions about what lenses to get for the Blackmagic Packet Cinema 4K camera. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, even better, go to my website, TomAntosFilms.com, and subscribe to my newsletter, so you're actually notified uh, about new cool articles, giveaways that I do, and, uh, and other cool stuff that I have going on there on my website. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!